good evening all aspiring candidates each and every viewer and each and every person preparing for this or these kind of examinations welcome to another session with me varun on a card and in today's session we would be talking about all the major ports in india and also we would be understanding some major description about them well this video should be suitable for all upsc scc cds and other competitive exams well this is me varun recording the video and if in case you have liked my videos you can follow me on instagram on my facebook on the id's mentioned below which is varun rao underscore gemini well i work as a developer and i'm doing these videos out of passion to help at least a few right so let's begin well these are some major ports that i have for you well most of the images that i have in most of my videos are all copied from google so guys you should also be able to find them well so going from the top which is in the west to the top in the east we would be looking at all of them so we have mundra kanla jamnagar mumbai goa mangalore cochin tuticorin chennai visakhapatnam paradeep kolkata and haldia or haldia all these are the ports that we have out of these visakhapatnam chennai tuticorin and mangalore they are all artificial harbors or artificial ports which we have available in those places right so the first one that we have which we would be discussing about would be the chennai port or madras port this is the second largest container port of india and it is also the third oldest port in india that started its operations way back in 1881 much almost you know like half a century before we got independence we had chennai port which was functional chennai port came to be known as the gateway of south india okay and here you have automobiles cargo containers coal terminals for loud lighthouses intra port connectivity pipelines and railway terminals which all would be handled and this is surrounded by the historic and the modern lighthouses which give the chennai port a beautiful look like all those who have not been to this port should visit this port in the evening if you're looking for a scenic beauty in the city the second one is haldia kolkata port which is located near the hubli river of west bengal state in india which is to the east of the country and it is a very important trade center for kolkata and also for india now this is also a very important port because it was constructed by british east india company for their own uh, you know trade and for their own prosperity all right and its exports were jute tea coal steel iron ore leather etc and its imports are mainly that of machinery crude oil paper fertilizers and chemical products well this port is also functional as the indian coast guard base so that is also a very important point for here to for us to remember and this is the oldest operating port in india well the chennai one which we saw it is the third oldest while haldia is the oldest port in india the next is jawaharlal nehru port which is also called as navasheva navasheva is actually derived from the names of two villages that we had in that area and the port on the arabian sea which i mean now that we all know that this port is on arabian sea and this is accessed via the thane creek thane is a place in mumbai or in maharashtra and it is through this creek that we access the navasheva port and this is situated on the main land of konkan area maharashtra which is the king of arabian sea at the west coast because it also handles a large volume of national and also international traffic and also has huge voluminous cargo traffic well this port is also the terminal of western dedicated freight corridor which is proposed by the indian railways right the next one that we have after haldia and navasheva or jawaharlal nehru port is kamrajhar port or ennore port well this port is the first public company in india situated on the koramandal coast about 24 kilometers north of chennai port in chennai only and this is the 12th major port of india not very important the first two points but are very important for your exam perspective okay and this is a corporate one which is located along the koramandal coast and it also has along with it another private which is 
Krishapatnam Fort. Okay, please remember these facts. Fifth one we have in the list is Kangla Port. It is the busiest and the richest port in India. It is filthy rich. Like each and every person who has their business set up in this port is nothing less than a millionaire. Okay. Well, it's a seaport in the Kutch district of Gujarat in Western India, which is near Gandhi Dham. And it is located on the Gulf of Kutch where we have the first SCZ. What is SCZ, friends? SCZ is a special economic zone. Okay. So this is where it is located and it is the highest earning ports in India. Another port which is situated very close to this port is the Mundra port. That is also a very large private port. And Kanra was constructed just after independence, immediately after independence as an effect of partition from Pakistan because the port of Karachi went with them during partition. Right. So this is about Kanra. The next one we have is Kochi or Cochin port. This is also a very major port on the country wherein you have the Lakhadiv Sea and the Indian Ocean Sea Road. So Lakhdiv is basically the Lakshadweep. Okay. Now the port lies on two islands in the Lake of Kochi. The first is Willingdon Island and the second is Vallar Padam. So Vallar Padam, uh, it is towards the Fort Kochi River where you have the mouth opening onto the Lakshadweep or the Lakhadiv Sea. Now this port has the largest, okay, please remember this fact. It has the largest container transshipment facility in India and it is also a major center for shipbuilding in India. We mainly export tea, coffee and spices from this place and we also take care of mineral oil and fertilizers which are exported. And this port is equipped with a maritime facility like Cochin Refinery and Kochi Marina. And for traditional spices as we all know Kochi is famous all over the world. We, I mean, India is a place which was discovered because of its spices. They came to India for the kind of spices that we had in our country. And the first time we all know Vasco da Gama entered to India through Calicut with the name of spice trade. Okay. The next we have is a new Mangalore port. Now it is a deep water all weathered port which we have in Parambur in Karnataka. Now this is situated very close to Mangalore, not Bangalore friends. Please don't uh, misunderstand or misinterpret this with Bangalore. Bangalore is another city which is the capital of Karnataka. We are talking about Mangalore. Now this new Mangalore port is also the deepest inner harbor on the western coast of the country and it is the only port of Karnataka that is currently the seventh largest port in India. And you have major commodities like manganese, granite, stones, coffee, cashew, petroleum, timber, LPG, which are exported and imported from New Mangalore port. Being deep weather and being all weather, so being deep sea and all weather, you can transport whenever you want. Next is Marmagao port in Goa. It was awarded the status of a major port in 1963. And they are also the leading iron ore exporters of India. And uh, now when we say leading, they do almost up to 50 million tons per year. 50 million tons. I leave this to your imagination to fill in the zeros. And that is the total number of tons that we have that's exported only of iron through Goa. You have four new harbors here uh, in the Vasco Bay to handle container traffic and cargo. Notwithstanding this, you also have international airport which is Dabul and Marmagao port, which is one of the biggest attractions of Goa. And as a natural harbor of Goa, it holds distinction for being one of the most earliest modernist parts of the country. Next one is the Mumbai port. This is in Maharashtra. It's a very famous port. Okay. Now it is basically divided into three wet enclosed docks. The name of the three wet enclosed docks are Prince Dock, Victoria Dock and Indira Dock. The Jawahar Dock is also a dock, but it is not an enclosed wet dock. It is basically an island in the harbor wherein you would be handling crude and petroleum products. The rest all wherein you have the Princess Dock and Victoria Dock are semi-tidal docks wherein you have vessels departing at high tide. Whereas Indra Dock, it has a lock wherein 
the vessels would be able to depart or enter at any time. Now, this international port, you have here huge traffic coming in and because of this huge volume of traffic, we had to come up or modernize another port and so that you know we could divert all the traffic to that place and on those lines we have the Nava Shiva port in Maharashtra which handles the traffic which directly comes to the Mumbai port in Maharashtra. The tenth one is Port Blair port or the one in Port Blair. Well, this is in Andaman and Nicobar Islands. It's the youngest seaport in the country and the port connected to the mainland of India through ship and flight. So there's no other medium that you can go. You, you don't have a roadway to Andaman and Nicobar's Port Blair. Port Blair okay? And it is also a very famous scuba diving center. And you have the Virgin Beach here and also some very good water sports that are entertained for tourists to be you know, seen. Now this port is also situated between two international shipping lines namely Saudi Arabia and Singapore and both of them are pretty huge. Now this port is also the principal hub for shipping in Andaman Islands. The next is Paradeep which is in Jagatsinghpur in Odisha. Now this is an artificial deep water port on the east coast of India. It is situated where the Mahanadi River and the Bay of Bengal confluence and it mainly deals with iron and coal. These are the two mostly dealt products, iron and coal. Though iron is exported to Japan in huge quantities, huge quantities like, I don't mind saying 20% of the coal or, and 20% of iron ore is directly exported. And uh, you know, you have a national highway which connects to all uh, I mean, you have different national highways which connect to different entries or all the entries of this port, Paradi port. And it also has its own railway station or railway system and also has a cold handling storage port or a part which is associated directly to Paradi port in Odisha. The twelfth one that we have is the Tuticorin port which is also called as V.O. Chidambaram port. Now, this is the second largest port in India and it is the fourth it is the second largest in Tamil Nadu and the fourth largest in India. I'm sorry, please make a note of this. It is an artificial port as we all know and it mainly trades with Sri Lanka and it is very properly connected with railways, roadways and airways. Now the best part is it is very famously called as the Pearl Fishery in Bay of Bengal and is also known as the Pearl City. Now this is also an all-weather port which handles huge international traffic cargoes and vehicles and it, it, it mainly deals with trade of coal, salt, food grains, edible oil, sugar, petroleum products, etc. The last one that we have on the list is Vishakhapatnam port which is India's second largest port by volume of car cargo handles. It, you know, it handles. It's, it's not a port which is huge in, you know, in terms of, you know, just water and in terms of size. It is second largest by volume of cargo handled okay and it is in Vizag or Vishakhapatnam which also happens to be India's largest and oldest shipyard and is established on the southeast coast in Andhra Pradesh. This is the only natural harbor that we have present in the Bay of Bengal and this port is again subdivided into three harbors which is the outer, inner and fishing harbor. This port Basically, it deals with you know iron, uh, iron pellets, coal, alumina, and oil. So basically, it deals with a lot of energy extracts or fossil extracts that we have. And this is also located in midway between Chennai and Kolkata port. So Vishakhapatnam port would act as a switch between both these ports, right? So I hope you have enjoyed watching. I would really like to thank each and every viewer for watching the entire video. If there's anything that you would want to share or if there's anything that you would want to ask, please use the comment section below. If you have liked the video, hit the like button so that it encourages us and we would also know if you liked the video or not. And if you feel that this might help or this might be of any use to any of your friends, hit the share button immediately. So with an expectation that you have enjoyed the video, this is me, Varun Rao, logging off, hoping to see you in the upcoming video with many more things that you have not discussed. Have a great time. All the very best for the exam that you're about to prepare. This is me, Varun Rao from ACARD, logging off.